I mean, more or less that I, I didn't really want anything. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, Peaches, what about you? Uh... Are you still looking? Uh, yeah, I saw a multi-tool around here. That seems like something a firefighter just itches to have. And you lost your last multi-tool in the bottom of the aircraft that crashed in... Oh, yeah. Iowa. The dragon... The dragon set. Yep. A dragon <laughs> sat on that aircraft. And did not make any babies from it. Let's see. So where... I saw it. Where did I see that? Quarter? Yeah, it'll be... It'll be in the same place that you found the flares. Actually. The flare gun and the flares. Huh. Fortunately, Not we don't better. have any mind flares. <laughs> yes, the multi tool is in core earth, not in core games. Oh, okay, it's in core. Oh, that's right, because a multi tool is kind of a very specific core earth item, unique right. to our core earth. It better be a darn good one for $40. Uh, is, is, you know, you get very... I've bought several multi-tools over the years, and all of them eventually break. Yeah. But then I'm an aircraft oh. mechanic. Well, I was an aircraft mechanic, so I, I went through a lot of multi-tools that I was never supposed to use on aircraft. I see under Court Earth, the uh, night vision goggles are here, and we are going into Orosh. Yep. Uh, but keep in mind, nods are, are high-tech, so... Yeah, but they're not a higher tech than me. Well, as long as they're not a higher tech than you, if you have a surge or a a, a test... And I, I, I need to clear something up uh, earlier. Gordon, thank you for bringing this to my uh, back to my memory. Um, if you have... Um, I was talking about the, the, the probabilities of disconnection... Um, and a, a one case is when either you or your tool that you're using, um, are above the tech rating of the reality that you are in. Okay. Either or a four case is when both you and the tool are above the axiom level. Did I get that right? No, sorry. That's still not right. Well, what is it to your understanding? It's. If the tool is above both you and the area, that's a four case. If the tool is above either you or the area, that's a one case. So it, 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 it's, it's not whether it, it's not you locally, it's the tool locally. Because if you support it, it's only a one case. Yeah. But if the realm supports it, but you don't, that's still only a one case. Listen to what so Gordon if said. Darius, <laughs> if Darius, who is Tech 14, is carrying a flashlight, which is Tech 20, mm -hmm. in Core Earth, that's still only a one case, because Core Earth supports the flashlight, right. even though Darius doesn't. But if Darius, Tech 14, is carrying a flashlight, Tech 20, in a Rorsch, which is Tech 18, that's a four case, because the flashlight is above both Darius and a Rorsch. I always yeah, he... forget to blame the tool. I always blame the knight. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do. Uh, I've always heard it the way he said it. Yeah. So. Yeah. The way Gordon said it is the way that I remember it now. Uh, I just, like I said, I always blame the Storm Knight, not the tool. And it's supposed to be the tool. So mm -hmm. the tool is the, is the, 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 the crux of the whole thing. So Gordon is correct. I am incorrect. Thank you very much for the correction. No worries. Bravo. What he said. Yeah. All right. So uh, I am going to uh, uh, toss on, on my noggin some of these uh, night vision goggles. I won't be wearing them unless I specifically say so. Thank you. Okay. That, that should be fine. Um, just keep in mind, uh, nods can also break. They're kind of fragile. Having used... Uh, having used night vision goggles when I was in the army for for aviation, for masking and unmasking operations and the like, anything night vision necessary, they break easy. So we'll yeah, try and, we'll try not to do that here, but you know. And they're expensive. But uh, and they're ex they're bloody expensive. They're really expensive. So. Yeah, see. like 
like like uh, the man in Jurassic Park said, are they heavy? They're expensive. <laughs> They're heavy on the sole, not so much on the head. Although, if you wear them for two or three hours, you start to feel them. Uh, I'm going to tell you that right now. Okay, so peaches. Are you still looking for stuff? Uh, no, I got a new cell phone because the dragon sat on my old one. I already had that done. Good point. Um... I managed to keep my power gloves through all this, which is freaking amazing. I lost everything else. Yes, I <laughs> I rolled for your power. Oh, no, wait a minute. I didn't roll for your power gloves because you had them on you at the time in aisle. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I tend to keep them tucked into my belt on me, not in not packed in my suitcases. Yeah. Or actually wear them like, you know, the they look like workman's gloves. Actually. Exactly. So it's exactly, like mechanics. Yeah, um, it's not unlikely that I would have them and my axe, but uh, you know they don't lend any strength to my axe no, ability. It's it's just unarmed combat. Okay, yeah. Darius, what do you I think? Am, I am all set okay. because I chose an alternative. Okay. I, I figure some people are gonna have machetes, mm -hmm. and as long as we're together as a group, multiple machetes, great. I don't need one, mm -hmm. but what I was looking for was alternatives that would be within my tech level. And I did some research on the difference between a machete and a sword, which I already have, mm -hmm. and the difference between a machete and an axe. And as it turns out, machetes are better for green wood, especially young green wood, mm -hmm. which you're going to get a lot of in a jungle, but axes are better for larger trees. Mm -hmm. So... If other people have machetes, I picked up an axe so that we've got the best of both worlds. There you go. Heck yes. yeah. The, far, the firewoman also has a great big axe strapped to her back. And it's actually it's a, two, right? Yeah, two of them. They're actually fire axes from, you know, so they've got like bright yellow, you know, reflective tape on them. And just, just you know, like my picture with her, with right. that fire axe over her shoulder. Right, but I, she, I picked she's up got a, a, uh, a battle axe. A battle axe, there a, you go. Yeah, she's got a pair of those crossed across uh, across her back there. Uh, now, the question is, do you have the blades pointing towards each other, or do you have them pointing outwards? Uh, it could be either or, technically. But if you think about it, if you have somebody coming up behind you to attack you, you could always just kind of lean into them. <laughs> yeah, um, it, that that's a a pretty uh, rude and unsafe way to to wear them, but that's probably how she had started to. I imagine initially she wore them, uh, blade in where you know it would be safe in quotes, you know, like yeah. we're running through burning buildings. But she's not doing that so much lately. Well, there you go, there you go. Uh, the war has yes. begun to turn you cynical. <laughs> yes, and she th she's used them as battle axes instead of as their intended rescue. Okay. But uh, all right, let me let me so, move along here. Uh, go ahead, Darius. I, yeah, I, I picked up the battle axe. I picked up some rope, which for some reason I didn't have, and then I also got a couple of healing potions, and I I think I'm set. Okay. All right. That sounds great. Now, bear in mind that uh, there will be other rope available with the survival kits. I just, I thought they were all made. I'll have to look through the books, see what they have, and then I will construct the the items for those so that you can drag them right over onto your sheet. Um, and those are generally considered to be expendable, those kits. So, you know, you use them as you use them. Uh, Rios. All right, so I will be acquiring five sticks of dynamite, <laughs> um, a machete for Andon, but not one for myself. Okay. Go ahead and put that on an Andon sheet if you haven't already. Oh, okay. God, help us all. <laughs> <laughs> yes, even though I have the strength to catch and as he falls and dramatically pull him into my arms i am not going to be the one wielding the machete exactly <laughs> hey, better be safe than sorry <laughs> that that was almost spider man-ish in uh or spider woman-ish if you will uh spider gwen that was uh, awesome in, in yeah in that last adventure that was pretty good okay <laughs> anything else rios uh do, 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 do. so uh 
would there be any chance that I can try to scrounge up some more silver jewelry, or has that opportunity passed? Well, remember what I read earlier. Um, Sir Fisk yes, was saying is- it might be a bad idea to take silver with you. Um, yeah, unless I mean, you're- I'd rather not get into a fight with the local population from trying to steal silver from you, because that's just not going to end well, and I'd rather not end up back in prison. It, yeah, I it- can- Really back in prison. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that, that, that's a story for another day. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Thor feels pretty intense sometimes. Uh, yeah. Sometimes. See. Oof. I can't wait yeah. to sit down well, and start reading this book. Okay. Yeah. All the time. Sorry. Just trying, just trying to play down a little. Okay. Uh, I could attempt to hide it in my bustier. You could. Yeah. It's small. It might be difficult to find. Um. um yes. It. it it doesn't preclude us from having maybe a religious item tucked in, like a cross. Uh, well, again, you know, you're you're going into a rorsch, um, and they know that silver can kill beasts, and silver will generally kill beasts faster than a religious item. So you can look. I'm not. I'm not saying you guys can't take silver items, silver weapons, uh, jewelry, things like that. But bear in mind, you could lose it. So gotcha. in this particular instance, that's what the warning was about. Uh, um, so, uh, so I, I guess her little cross necklace that she got at communion would be gold instead of silver. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. It, it might be gold plated. It might be full gold. You know, whatever. But um, uh, okay, Katsumi. Yes, sir. Uh, did you get everything that you need to to buy, or do you need some? Uh, do you have some questions for me? Question. Sure. Augmented reality HUD. What's the penalty, or what's the danger to the okay. area we're going in for it? Okay, an augmented reality HUD. That's from the Cyber Papacy. Uh, regular gear, general, right? Yes. Okay, augmented reality HUD. Uh, a projection into one or both eyes analyzes and labels combat threats and anything the user stares at. Find and dodge become favored skills uh, so long as the HUD's sensors can detect the opponent. It is tech level 26. Uh, the danger is, as we've been describing... Um, well, technically, for a character who's already tech 26, there oh, yeah. will be no additional danger. Does having back out of the area, if I understood the description correctly, and forgive my ignorance, uh, I don't mean to offend anyone with that, that increases the chance of trouble, correct? No. Not because, much. Because, because you, you're the Storm Knight yourself, you already have Tech 26, and the equipment you already have is Tech 26. Adding on another Tech 26 piece of equipment is going to make no difference. Right, right. Uh, but as far as potential disconnects, uh, what uh, what uh, uh, Gordon was saying a little bit ago, uh, you would have a, you would be a one case in the area that you're going into. So, okay. yeah. And that, in terms of small, uh, light, medium, or heavy kind of chance of disconnect, where would you rate that? Small, Just out of curiosity. very light. But you okay. know, ones do come up on on D twenty rolls. So you know, it's, it's just something to keep in mind. I just wanted to ask because that part I did not understand, and I'm it, don't it, mean to take up anybody else's time. No, no, no. You're perfectly fine. Uh, it's something that needs to be kind of understood. Is that you guys have a possibility of to disconnect the difference is i'm supposed to keep track of of those disconnection chances to the best of my ability so and i i i need to make sure i convince myself that it's the tool and not the storm knight or the reality that are the problem the tool causes the the contradiction Okay, and uh, some powers and stuff like that will cause contradictions as well. If you've got a power on your character that has a star, uh, it can cause a contradiction. But again, generally, it's only going to be a one case. So one additional, there was some discussion earlier about survival kits. I found survival kits. I have one on my character sheet. 
that's been there since I created the character. But I did find a listing within the two, uh, within the equipment for various types of uh, survival kits you had noted. Um, okay. Just to let you know that I found them because you were okay. Yeah, I, I understood correctly. You had lost track of them. <laughs> I had, but, like, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I did find them again. I promise. <laughs> okay. Well, I have to see some in the list here, and then I also yep. had one on my, a general, I guess, a general uh, survival kit. But I thought I would share that for those that may not have seen that. Yeah. Um, oh. Uh, Gordon, I think I know what happened with the Living Land Survival Kit. They had things within it that were higher tech level than, right. uh, yeah. So I changed that up to the proper tech level, but I will be putting together an actual Living Land Kit. I, I don't well, know what there, all will go in it, but. Hmm? There is one in the Living Land source book. It's called a Primitive Survival Kit. Yeah. Well, hopefully it's all primitive. It's all tech six and below. Um, the primitive survival kit is tech six. Yeah. What I'm saying is the items within the kit are all of the items tech six or below. And that's what I'm going to be checking this next week. Okay. Yes, it's animal ladder canteen, 20 meters of vine rope, rawhide sleeping mat, polished stone, pitch torch, and flint fire starter. Primitive survival kit, you say. Let me see something here. Gear? general of the uh, nope. of the uh, living land source book yeah i i don't i don't have it in the general living land stuff i will be getting it in there okay um and and i'm going to be looking book by book for that information to make sure i have it correct and if they don't have one i'm going to create one so all right so have we uh let's see who was uh so katsumi have you got everything that you wanted Oh, uh, just about. Okay. I thought I'd have to take a look here in a moment. Okay. And see if there's anything here that is not allowed. Okay. I'm done looking. If you want to take a quick look. Um. Okay. Well, I I'm not sure what uh, what you will have picked up, uh, unless you listed it in the chat. No. Okay. So that's nope. okay. I'm going to sheet. But I can put them on the chat. No, 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 no. Don't worry about it. I'm I'm looking right now. Uh. So what exactly, you've got the DC Survival Kit at Tech 21. What else did that you purchase? That I have not been built for character, honestly. <laughs> that one, oh, okay. Um, augmented Reality HUD, you've got that. Uh, what else were you looking at? There's an Identity Scrambler and Projection Clothing. Okay, uh, let's see. Let me read both of those. Basically, I don't think any of these are going to be a problem the input from any camera oh yeah that's okay. not going to be a problem but bear in mind uh bear in mind this identity scrambler only affects you and then projection clothing a simple skin tight covering that projects dynamic layers of holographic apparel including effects like flames so you're you're joining the uh uh what it hunger games club uh, user can yeah. toggle different between different pre-programmed outfits or create his own with the cyber deck. Okay, um, roll me a d6 if you would please. Bear with me one moment, please. Okay. Okay. At the current time, you have one type of projection. You can have the the regular clothing. Okay, if you turn off the holographic projection, or you can have the, you know, one that you like a lot. So try and write down For what that moment. is. I'm sorry? For the moment, I actually have an idea. We're going, you said, into a Rorsch, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. The projector, projector projects of what amounts for civilian clothing in a Rorsch. So I look like your everyday person. Uh, that's excellent. So you could actually look a lot like Andon, you know. Yep. Or... Oh, 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 what if what if we all go outfit shopping together? I could introduce everybody to my favorite tailor. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, oh, <laughs> I, don't, uh, Robert, Robert. Uh, <laughs> I don't think anything will fit me. <laughs> <laughs> excellent on you. 
<laughs> I would look ridiculous. <laughs> Who says what you do don't? <laughs> okay. Yeah. It, it just says I look ridiculous in a skirt. What are you kidding? <laughs> I Wait, know I do. Kilt? Uh, that killed me. Okay. Um, <laughs> wah, wah, I know it was terrible. Wah, wah. Wah. <laughs> that was awful. Okay, Toma. Uh, have you picked out some things that you wanted? I did. I'm about to put them into the chat right now to see if there's anything that might not work well. Okay. Uh, let's see. The Alf Sprayer. I need to look at that one. Uh, let's see. Thurkold. Uh, gear. Come I on. can share it to the chat. Firearms. I'm almost there already. Alf Sprayer. Okay. Oh, it's a ballistic. Okay. It is ballistic, isn't it? An advanced energy weapon. This assault weapon fires bolts of charged plasma to devastating effect. The distinctive sound of its energy projectiles are well known around Tharkold. Special trait. The weapon is meant to be fired braced on the ground or a bipod. So this is a large weapon. This, yep. is, this is a heavy weapon. Yep. Okay. Okay. No, there's no guarantee I'll use it in well, this adventure anyhow. Just like, you know, just in case. So let's see. I do want to say it does remind me of the guns from Terminator. <laughs> what I'm thinking you, of, you, though, you see that, right? Yeah. Well, what I'm, I'm thinking of is that it's it, you're buying that in place of a machete. You're going to clear away the undergrowth faster than anybody. I would rather not use it in the forest if possible. <laughs> uh, that yeah. might not end well. Okay, it doesn't say how how long a power pack actually lasts. So I'm going to, I get to use Game Master Fiat, which means if it's a particularly dramatic area of a round, uh, I can have your power pack drained. <laughs> as a, as a, that, that'd be a major setback, though. That's okay. I can charge it myself. Well, ah. that's, Sacrifices. that's, I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, let's see. It, it is, it well, I have the Alp Weapon Dock. Yeah, yeah, you could probably, but yeah, it's going to cost you a shock. Well, yeah, well, I know. <laughs> it's only if I'm desperate. So it's so an very in very desperate situations. Yeah. You're going to need uh, to eat a lot of carbs. <laughs> <laughs> now, what's that, Ginger? I, I hate to interrupt, but uh, I don't think I need a machete and an electric katana. I'm either going to have to sell it one, one or the other or yeah, use the katana. As a uh... well, you you just made the argument a few minutes ago that uh, uh, an electric katana may not be may not act so well in a So yeah. hey, keep it as a trophy. Yeah, I kind of want to keep it as a trophy, but we uh, oh, cool. I guess if we have a base. Yeah, I mean, if, if I were you, I would leave it at base. Yeah. Yeah. Or it for you. Uh, okay, guy. As for uh, leaving it at bay, yeah, you could you could note that that particular item is uh, was left w uh, you know in the Delphi Council's care. You know they are the good guys after all. Oh my gosh! Yeah, it, and there's no way they can get us any silver, say, ammunition or a silver dagger. Maybe That's, uh, uh, only if you want to have the chance of them getting stolen. Uh, yeah, but I d it doesn't necessarily mean I have to flash it around. I have a great big axe on my back and a machete. Is anybody going to actually be frisking me for a silver dagger? Uh, maybe. You never know. They might be desperate. What puts a werewolf down better than server or uh, silver? <laughs> well, I mean, punches work well sometimes, but it takes a while. Yeah, <laughs> and a lot of speed. Uh, yeah. I, Ginger, I leave it up to you. How do you want to, to do things? You've got the two axes. You've got a sword. Uh, if you're leaving the sword behind, you can always use your two axes. And just, you know, if you want, get your money back and, and get rid of the uh, machete. Uh, I, I suppose even if the electric part of it drops out, it's still a, a katana, isn't it? Yes, it still acts as a regular katana. What would you guys do? She's, she's kind of pondering this situation and asks for advice from the gang. <laughs> Don't everybody speak at once. I mean, I, <laughs> I, 
A machete is specifically made to clear away yeah. uh, jungle vegetation. So <laughs> right. the right tool for the job. Exactly. And if I recall, we've only got two people with machetes right now, uh, except for, for you, Peaches. If you get rid of yours, there will only be two two uh, machetes. One for Andon, I mean, one for Chris. Yeah. I, have one. I bought one. Oh, did you? Okay, so three machetes. Yep. That's half of the yeah. group. You could leave it behind. I mean, if someone needs to borrow my machete, I've got my slashers. They're just not as efficient. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and, and they're for flesh, not plants. Same with the katana. Mm, yeah. Nothing like, a, nothing like a blade cutting through flesh. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Hold on, Cordy Evans. Sorry. Easy race, uh, soldier. I apologize. <laughs> okay. Sorry. So you, uh, Peaches, you make the decision. Uh, I'm going to read the next part and get us into scene one. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's see. Despite the rain and wind coming in from the coast, making the day overall miserable, the vegetation of the place begins sparse and is full of beautiful flowers and people not altogether unhappy, bringing peace and color to a place that otherwise feels dark and oppressive. However, it is not long after you leave the manicured jungle of the coast, you find yourselves in a true jungle, the palm fronds as large as a big man's chest, and nothing but multiple shades of light to dark green vegetation. From many places that might otherwise provide reflections of light, dark shadows instead peek out, uh, some deeper than midnight with no stars here. Noises emitting from beyond the foliage uh, sound more like the hooves of large beasts or the paws of one or more wildcats, which seem to close on you, though just as you prepare to slap leather, ready to draw a pistol or rifle or other close quarters weapon, you feel powerful air either caress your face or full-on slap it. Um, I have a question. Sure. Are, are we still in Core Earth, or are we in Arorsh reality? You are at. You are since you landed in Arorsh. Okay. Smells better than Tharpold. Let's bring flesh. <laughs> um, and I, I, I will deal with setting up uh, something to get you into Arorsh here in a minute, uh, to to help you guys understand the world laws and the uh, axioms. Uh, let's see where. Uh, where was I? Okay. You feel... Just as you're ready to draw a pistol or rifle or other close quarters weapon, you feel powerful air either caress your face or full-on slap it, perhaps flinging some manner of flora or even mud from nowhere to stain your clothing or your uh, motive surroundings, and then recede without your eyes making contact with any beast, fair or foul. Your laughter may be nervous at best, or your personal paranoia may be buffering your anxiety into a maddening fugue, uh, your mind becoming lost in the almost entirely unchanging scenery before the noises begin again, sometimes harder or deeper than before, and sometimes there is no air, stolen in the jungle like a wall blocking it, making your blood run cold for a moment until you can regain your sane mind. Uh, I, I kind of underdressed this a little bit. Let's just say Arosh is very, very, very oppressive. It's very hard to stay positive. All right. Uh, three more days through a combination of train, wagon, horse, and or zeppelin to Tezpur, Assam, India. And you find yourself in the town square of a village, a few businesses, and nearly three dozen houses. Your wagon stopping at the residence of one who runs the Postal Express as well. Uh, the near constant heat, inability to stop for rest in many places, as well as the continued motion of your varied means of travel, with clothes soaked in sweat, your mind battered by a lack of sleep, and the constant unknown loud and long growls from the jungle, has you exhausted and desirous of a long rest. And we get into scene one. Okay, a little bit more narrative, and then we'll start with the role-playing. Disembarking from the wagon and looking about you, the jungle seems to swallow the town around the square as you're able to see little beyond any of the homes or businesses lining and contained within the public space. Even as you attempt to shake off the dust, sweat, and exhaustion of the past several days, you find little relief, and the soreness seems to compound. Travel by means available in the Victorian era has proven not to be easy for you unless, of course, you're from a Rorsch. Shaking off the shock, though, yeah, 
I thought you might catch that. Shaking off the shock, though, because of who you are, you hear the voice of a child coming near, calling loudly a name familiar to you. Miss Peaches! Penny's nickname is called out once, twice more to get attention, and then her left hand is taken by a tiny palm and fingers, cool and refreshing, in the gloom resting in your mind. Come with me, please. And Jura sent me to bring you. I don't do a kid's voice very well, sorry. Who sent us? Who sent you? Andrew! Andrew, come! He's waiting for you! Do we know an Andrew? I look over at everybody. Every, everybody could look back at you and go, uh... Yeah. I, did. <laughs> I look back at you, shrug, and I, I guess we're, that's the person we're here to meet or something? I, I mean, it's hard to not trust kids. I it, don't know who it is, but I do know it is impolite to keep people waiting. Indeed. Yeah. True. All right, all right, all right. Come on, kid. Show the way. And besides, if it turns out bad, I'll start throwing punches. Oh, you don't want to do that. Okay. <laughs> Not uh, to a child. Unless I things... To a, I, didn't say a punch a, I didn't say punch a child. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that depends. Are they bringing a bomb close? Um, I've seen that before. Okay. Um, well, don't ask. Jeez, man. Yeah. No, I, I wasn't going to. <laughs> Let's go back to the narrative, please. Okay. Tez Purr's Square is busy. Folks selling goods and barking as they prepare to close down for the afternoon, but hoping for the last-minute customer from abroad. Enough towns around Tez Purr have populations that work and shop within the district's chief town to keep it flush with currency, but the odd traveler brings a lot of reason to speak languages and of subjects otherwise restricted from the townsfolk. Food seems to be a high point of the economy and the spices emitting from a dozen and more delicacies chokes the air. Children run all through the town, laughing and smiling as they play. Enough people in town means uh, several exotic dialects are spoken, lively and with a rapidity that makes them hard to follow, despite the oppressive feel of the air to all of you. The incredible smell of meat and vegetables sizzling as it fries comes uh, from the cafe nearby, overpowering the rest of the smell swirling about you, where the sweet, insistent voice of the child now holding Penny's hand seems to be leading. Rounding the corner of the cafe, the side nearest the main street off the square, few folk uh, are in the place, though you see an abundance of children surrounding a deep brown-skinned man with perfect white teeth and bright green eyes under an unruly head of silvery, uh, cur silver curly hair. His face is full of wrinkles, weathered and dry as Indian soil in summer. His, uh, he is laughing with the children, playing a game only they are running around for, and, through rules known only to the participants of the game, he gives small toffee candies at random, perhaps for indecipherable achievements. Even over the cacophony of their laughter while at play, after smiling at you all with a knowing grin, he speaks softly, and each of you hears it. It is no trick. His voice is simply very deep and reverberates from all surfaces of the cafe. Come, come. He meets the eyes of each of you in turn. Sit, and water will come to you. He then turns to the children, meeting the eyes of several of them, explaining something in their native dialect, such as, And Jura's friends are now here, my children. You must go. His accent is deeply Indian. I, I don't do Indian, I apologize. As one would expect, his English impeccable, his words clipped and spoken deliberately, though there is a strong hint of New York there as well. <laughs> Hey, fellow, fellow Yankees fan. Woot! He says, go Yankees! <laughs> <laughs> what are the Yankees? I can't keep track of that kind of stuff. Only the best baseball team ever. <laughs> yeah, know I'll it. Your, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> uh, one of us. Um, I sit down. <laughs> Okay. Um, chairs are actually a, a group of, of, of people very similar in, in stature and, and color to Andura come out with several chairs for all of you to be able to sit down. There were three that were vacated, but there are seven of you, so four more chairs are, are brought. He says, I oh, am Andura. You. You, you are welcome. I am Andura. I am a man of many pilgrimages and known by many throughout this region and further abroad. And then he holds up a hand, his palm basically uh, vertical, 
and he tells you the time of possibilities has begun. <laughs> Do you guys what remember that, that phrase? <laughs> hey, Paul. Yes. My character does not take a seat. I'll blend into the background and keep close enough that I can hear the conversation, but I'm watching for threats. Okay. And okay. sticking to the background. So okay. I'm not an immediate threat to anyone, but I'm still there and I'm guarding the group as a whole. Well, um, about the only place you're really going to be able to do that is back towards the bar slash kitchen area. You can find a corner that is somewhat dark, but it's also tight there. And when you look to the outside, there is no cover to your back. That's fine. Like I said, I would just want to blend into the background, whether it's people, whether it's terrain, building, whatever. I just want to blend into the background. So... Okay. I tend to be forgotten, kind of, by anybody who might be trying to pick us out, that kind of thing. Okay, well. I'm going to have hypersensitivity mode, as it were. Okay. Guarding the... All right. All right. Fair enough. Um, uh, so there may come a time when I will call for a stealth test. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if or when that will be. Uh, actually, I, I, I am, but. We'll play through and, and see how it goes. Um, Andrew looks at you expectantly as though any of you might have a question to ask him. What does that mean? What is the time of possibilities? The time of possibilities is now. You do have the tiles, do you not? Oh. Yes. Yes, actually, we do. And how do you know that? Because I must know that. On one and of my many pilgrimages, uh, he, he kind of launches into a, a, a little thing uh, after he answers that. He says, on one of my many pilgrimages in my younger days, I visited the temple you seek, but never went inside. The place is one of great reverence, though I never visited within. It is a place not only important to the past, but also to the future of this newly invaded Earth. Now, let me point out something before I go any further. Not everyone on Earth understands that an invasion has happened. As a matter of fact, to most people, the ordinary people on Earth, the places have become darker or places have become different than what they remember from from just a few days or a couple of months or from their youth ago um but a lot of people don't understand that the invasion of all these realities has happened at all okay uh and jura is one of those that seems to understand so chris you had a question Oh, I was like, I said, why you know, did you know? And then it was like, why must you know? I must know because I must know. It is, he, he shrugs and kind of scrunches up his face at you and holds out his hand kind of like Captain Kirk. And he's like, I must know. Can you direct us to the temple where the where the plates came from yes that is what i am here for so is it like a chicken or in the egg situation like you're not sure which comes first like you knew just because you've always known or is it just like you at one day you then knew i'm just really hung up on this i don't know why it's just this one fact well oh this philosophy stuff is killing me <laughs> <laughs> i gotta ask what is this about plates Oh. oh, that's right. Uh, Toma wasn't there because yeah, Artorius a, had passed. There's a few of us that don't know. It. There's a few of us that don't know what in the world you're talking about. So, if you would enlighten us, I'd appreciate it. Okay, those of you who were in the Destiny map, hit it. Uh, plates uh, were stolen from this from the temple. He says he can guide us to a long time ago. 
uh, the uh, Nile Empire, where it was after them. We've learned also the what uh, uh, the reality invading the Japan is Pan Pacifica or Cyber mm -hmm. Pan, Pacifica. Know, Pan Pacifica and the Pan Pacifica. You're cutting out. Just let it rest for a minute. The the moral of the story is a lot of different bad people wanted them we got them um we need to get them back to the temple so we can figure out what this puzzle uh means it's it, it promises some kind of it will it's a clue to something about the possibility wars but what it is we don't know yet we're hoping the temple that they came from will give us answers this might be a weird question what's so special about plates you just ate food up for them <laughs> These are special plates. Um, Tiles. They were. Oh, that uh, makes sense. Yeah, they were wall mur murals uh, made of copper. Huh? No. When, they're stone. They're made of metal. They're stone. They're yeah, just they're regular stone, stone. Yeah, stone tablets that uh, lined a, a, a temple's walls. They they have something to do with the, um, all of this reality rating that's come to Earth. So we're trying to. Uh, Figure out if it's a clue, a reality shard, something. But uh, we need to go to the temple where these came from to see if we can find more information. Okay. Ooh, this looks like the Indiana Jones stuff. I'm in. Okay. <laughs> Very much so. Uh, now, on on your passage between uh, Houston and here, um, you were able to kind of talk about all of those things that uh that uh, uh connor and ginger were just talking about concerning these plates um but you've also seen the plates they're about four inches by four inches um they're probably a half inch thick uh maybe a little more than a half inch thick um and they you know four of the tiles have pictographs on them and then one of the tiles seems to have a kind of a language on it and and you were able uh, in, uh, yeah, uh, Chris, Peaches, and uh, I know Rios was there, um, were able to decipher at least some of the the title with the uh, the tile with the language on it, and it says the time of possibilities has begun. On it, okay. Now, obviously, you know. Connor and Ginger and and Catherine may not remember that portion, but it, it comes to be an important thing. Okay. Now, so this is something that I could be really good or really bad. It could be, it, it could be world ending or it could be world saving, depending on your actions. And um, Anjura goes to answer Chris's most recent question which is which his answer is as to why we have been called together to this lovely cafe on this hot but nonetheless beautiful day i can tell you of my dreams and why i am so remarkably pleased to see you in the flesh to see your faces many restless nights i have beheld your likenesses though only in the dreams and he looks at each of you uh in turn as he's talking uh now i am so, so you so you turned to this ugly mug right here. Yes. I'm pointing at myself. Yes. Oh, I feel fluttered. What? Please continue. Uh, I didn't say the dreams were all pleasant. Um, <laughs> <Ooh. wow. laughs> well, and, and he gives you a enough. big old toothy grin, man. If the sun was shining on his teeth, they would blind you at this point. Um, well, I mean, if it's anything like dark cold, then you know. <laughs> Anyway, he, he continues, now I am so weary, I am uncertain, I may, be, I, I may believe my own tired eyes, yet I believe the dreams now, and so I must tell you what else I have seen there. Others seek this temple, and the universal richness contained within, and they nip at your heels even now, so you must make haste, if you are to put any distance between them and you. I am old now, my legs and back are frail, and I cannot accompany you for I would die on the journey. But there are guides in town who may be willing to go with you to the temple, though if you follow my instructions without deviation, 
you may put a half day more between you and those who pursue the same knowledge as you. Are you prepared? As we'll ever be, I suppose. Me, okay. I hope you are. <laughs> yes. Well, we, could, we could try writing down these instructions, but with a code so that if we accidentally lose our note, nobody has to pick it up. Several of you do have notepads and uh, uh, I presume writing here. utensils or else what good is the notepad? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, also, yeah, also, uh, perhaps uh, any recommendations to guide us on the way would certainly uh, be welcome in case we've forgotten anything. Yes, I will happily provide that information. Andura gives you precise directions, ensuring you record or memorize them precisely, step for step. Uh, if one of you misses a step, another one of you seems to be able to pick it up so that you can remember how to get where you need to get. Uh, uh, during the transmission of these instructions, each of you in turn, especially those more suspicious than others, <coughs> Katsumi, have been watching your surroundings. The noise and confusion of the square, the sudden swelling of people toward the very end of the trading day, have been your own insurance that the likelihood you would you would be seen, even less heard, would be nigh impossible. However, just as the crowds are thinning uh, and various proprietors are beginning to close for the day, everybody needs to make a challenging find test, please. All right. Okie dokie, artichokey. And challenge... I should okay. probably make it with my own character sheet and not Andon's. That that's true. You <laughs> oh can my you can roll for Andon if you want. Okay, so hey, I succeed. Okay. I oh. failed badly. So okay. did I. Alright. That's okay. That's all right. No, 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 no. I got possible disconnect here. Well, hang on and on we'll a, deal with that. A, <laughs> no, a, I was just saying that's what I failed worse. <laughs> you rolled a two, right? Yes, I rolled a two. That's not a one. Well, I mean, a, a, a one, yeah, one is not a mishap. Okay, has everybody rolled now? Has has anybody not rolled now? I need to... Oh, hold on. You do I'm going to roll, roll for, for Andon. 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 Okay. Yeah. Uh. Okay, so... Uh, let's see, Remington, um, Ginger, yes. or, sorry, uh, not Remington, uh, to Toma, Peaches, uh -huh. Darius, <laughs> um, uh, uh huh, yeah, Everyone Katsumi, me. I, I really wish you would change that from Nefrakim, uh, cause Katsumi is hard enough to remember, uh, yeah, everybody but Chris. Uh, failed. Chris, that, that's actually that's actually kind of perfect. Um, Kat's Katsumi. Let's see, where, where's Katsumi at? Because she was keeping a specific watch. Okay, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Katsumi because she was concentrating on it. Um, uh, also succeeded. So Katsumi and um, uh, Chris. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. You see a gnarled and bent little man who looks as if he were transmuted from a dead oak tree into a human being is peeking out from behind the corner of a building across the square. Okay. So let me, let me read this real quick so that I can remember. It's been two months, three months since I wrote this. So... Uh, da -da. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so uh, I'm going to need, I'm going to need a D20. Okay, okay, no problem. So I need uh, Chris and Katsumi, who have both seen this gnarled little man taking uh, an express um, interest in the meeting you're having with Andura. 
I need you to roll. Uh, let's see, spy rolls are going to be fined. So, okay, so I get a roll for my guy, and you guys go ahead and generate uh, totals for, uh, make your rolls for find, please. What difficulty? Uh, st uh, the difficulty is a base, well, it's kind of a loose difficulty, so go with a standard. But we're going to see how things roll from there. Oh, oh boy. Okay, so that's 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 a that's a twenty-two right there. So I need my. See, I need that there. Uh, I don't think you roll, cat. What? No, no, no. It's it's just for for Chris and um, Katsumi. Uh, the other the others of you are are too engrossed in getting the directions down from Andura. So Here we go. plus eight. Okay. Did either of you beat a twenty one? No, no, you did not. Okay. So. Can I spend a possibility? If you would like to spend a possibility, certainly. Uh, you did not right. roll a one, so you can. Uh, same thing for you, Katsumi, if you would like to. 21. Okay, 21. Oh, wait. All right, uh, I will, I will I try to... on the possibility. Bear with me a moment. Okay. Yeah, don't forget How to... How do I roll the possibility again? Well, um, first off, you're going to mark one down unless you want me to mark it off. Uh, you presently oh, have... Done. Okay, you've already done it. So then uh, you just hit the possibility on your card in the chat. Um, you're going to see uh, Katsumi's picture there and then down towards the bottom. There you go. Uh, so Okay, so you, you lost... Uh, you almost immediately lost... Uh, Sight. The sight of this little guy as some people crossed in front of him. So, uh, Chris, that leaves it kind of to you. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, okay. So I need to get that down. Um, I need to go get some dice. Oh. Oh, where'd I put my dice? I rearranged my books. Now I can't find my dice. There they are. <laughs> How does rearranging your books keep you from finding your dice? Because <clears throat> I'm a knucklehead. I'm going to have only two dice. One for him and one for you guys. So, uh, that's well, that's going to count as a zero for right now. Okay. Chris. What what do you do once you spot this little guy and you see his face kind of turn sour and he disappears behind the corner of the building? Uh, I first look around at the peop you know, people around me. Did they and notice that they didn't notice a yeah. oak a rotten oak tree like person? Mm -hmm. And. I go one moment and I act, you know, dash away and try to follow. Katsumi, you see Chris dash away after looking around to see who else might have noticed. Uh, Chris, you noticed Katsumi was kind of alerted. Maybe, I don't know if you would get into an alert stat, uh, stance or anything like that. Um, but you noticed Katsumi was looking at least in the same direction you were before. What right, you... But again, I, he hasn't exactly done anything but act suspicious, so I don't mm -hmm. think I would bring much more attention than you know suddenly getting up saying one moment while I go check on something and then go. Yeah, um, you would have to fig figure out how to communicate with Katsumi on that. Um, uh, you may not want to. It's up to Katsumi if they follow me or not. Mm -hmm. But for all, all that my character has shared is that I they've seen me look suddenly look around, go mm -hmm. one minute, and I, I you know, while well, I go check on something, and I then I dash off. 
okay all right well katsumi what are you going to do i move to a point where i'm in front of the group but not if anybody happened to be looking my way mm -hmm. i'm not a part of the group but i'll move to the front of the group and begin scanning rooftops of nearby buildings okay so you're gonna trouble. you're gonna let chris go on his own then yes okay well i take up a, a more forward guard position come out of the shadows basically and take up a new position where i can watch with a clearer field of vision since oh. i've lost track of the little guy uh that i briefly glanced before okay as you described it. yes yes and and that's true okay i'm gonna open this up all right so here we are uh chris um we're going to do it's 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 not really a chase dsr okay um but uh, we're going to, to try and, and get into something. So uh, what I need you to do is go ahead and let's see, what would it be in this particular case? I think for you, it's still going to be a find. Okay, so you roll a find and I'm going to roll versus the, the stealth check of, of this little guy, which is Can pretty... Can I get some cards? Um, oh, good lord. Oh man. Okay. Can I get some cards? Do you really need some cards? Okay. Um, all of you can draw one Cosm card. Okay. And then five Destiny cards. Okay. Uh, what uh, reality? Uh, Orosh. Orosh. Uh, does uh, do any of you not remember how to do it? How many uh, Destiny cards? Four, right? Five. Three. Oh, that's right. You're... Thanks to the glory, right? Yep. 